Miss Miklos here, and um, in this lecture, we are reviewing section 2.3, which is synthetic division. Um, 2.3 in the book goes through a bunch of other stuff, but um, all we really care about is this portion, and it is a review because this is something that we learned in Algebra 2, and we're actually not really learning anything different from then. Um, and the reason why we are learning this is because when we get um, to section 2.5, we're going to have to know how to use this information in order to solve some bigger problems. Okay, so this is just going to be a little piece in some of the bigger issues. So let's go ahead and it says use synthetic division to preform, it should say perform, um, the following polynomial division. So a few things that we need to remember here. First thing I need to check for is that our polynomial is in descending order. Okay, so we know that the highest exponent should go first and it should continue down from there. If we are missing any terms, we need to go ahead and fill in a zero. So those are really the two things that we need to look at to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out a line of our coefficients. So if I look at our numerator here, um, I notice it is already in descending order and I'm not missing any terms because it goes x cubed, x squared, x constant. So I'm gonna go ahead and write two, negative nine, 14, negative eight. Then I'm going to skip a row and kind of um, just leave blank a blank spot. And I'm gonna draw a little half box here. And in order to figure out what to put in the box right here, and I'm gonna write it in in this space, it is always going to be the zero. And what I mean by that is I'm taking whatever this factor is, so in this case I had x minus three, and I need to know, okay, when is x minus three equal to zero? It is when x equals three. So um, what we will notice is it's always the opposite of this number, but the real reason why we use it is because it is the zero. And the way that we work with um, synthetic division, we always begin by bringing down the first number. So I'm gonna bring down that two. Now I need to multiply two times three is six. And I'm going to add down my column negative nine plus six is negative three, and now we start the process over again. Negative three times three is negative nine. When I add down my column, 14 plus negative nine is five. Five times three is 15. Negative eight plus 15 is seven. And so when I'm writing this, we always start one degree lower than my original polynomial. So if I look, my original polynomial here was x cubed, so that means my very first term here is going to be x squared, and then I'm going to continue down. So I have 2x squared minus 3x plus 5, and 7 is our remainder. Okay, so key thing here is I always start one degree lower than the original polynomial. The other way that I could write remainder of seven, I could write it as seven over x minus three. And I could add that, since it's a positive seven, I would add that onto this expression. T to be honest, um, synthetic division doesn't get much more difficult than this, so that's why we are only going to go ahead and do two more examples. So when I'm looking at number two, the big thing that jumps out at me is that I am missing an x cubed because it jumps from x to the fourth to x squared. So I'm gonna fill in a zero x squared. So this time in my box, my box number is going to be negative three because when I set this factor equal to zero, we would get negative three. My line of coefficients are going to be one, zero, negative 10, negative two, and four. So I'm going to begin by bringing my one down. One times negative three is negative three. When I add those, I get negative three. 
Negative three times negative three is nine. When I add those, I get negative one. Negative one times negative three is three. When I add down that column, I get positive one. One times negative three is negative three. And when I add down that column, I get one once again. So I know I need to rewrite this as an expression. And we always start one degree lower than my original um, polynomial. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 remainder of 1. Or I could have said plus 1 over x plus 3. And the degree of this quotient is 3 because we notice we have this x cubed. Okay, last but not least here, we have 4x cubed plus 16x squared minus 23x minus 15 over x plus 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and say negative 1 half is my box number because that's what I get when I set this equal to 0. My coefficients are 4, 16, negative 23, and negative 15. Notice that um, those were in descending order and I wasn't missing anything, so that's why I can go ahead and go straight into writing those. When I bring down my 4, 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. When I add down my column, I get 14. 14 times negative 1 half is negative 7. When I add down my column, I get negative 30. Negative 30 times negative 1 half is positive 15. So we end up getting 0, and I'm putting a smiley face because normally zeros make us happy. And I'm going to jump into answering this question. Um, what is the meaning of a 0 remainder? That's telling us that the box number is an x-intercept. Okay, so it's telling me in this case that negative one-half is an x-intercept. So negative one-half zero would be an ordered pair on this function. Now, going back to this, that, uh, that concept kind of um, relates to what we're going to do in a few days. Um, to write this, I need to start one degree lower. So I'm going to start with x squared. So 4x squared plus 14x minus 30. Now, we may notice in this that um, it has a GCF. However, I don't want to factor it, and I definitely cannot divide by it. The reason why I can't divide is because this is not an equation. So dividing would go ahead and change what that actual polynomial is. So I'm just going to leave that as my answer, and that's about all that we are doing in this lesson.